In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. During the season of Advent, Holy Mother Church, through her sacred liturgy, calls us to conversion. <clears throat> to those who are still under the chains of mortal sin, that call means, of course, that they must firmly resolve to renounce sin, remove the proximate occasions of it, make a good confession, and start leading a spiritual life by keep keeping themselves, by the help of the grace of God, in a state of grace, with the firm resolution to avoid sin in the future. <clears throat> this conversion means to pass from being habitually turned away from God as our supernatural end to being habitually turned towards him, which requires the possession of sanctifying grace and the avoidance of mortal sin, which is incompatible with it. This turning away of our will from mortal sin and towards God, our supernatural end, is what is meant by conversion in its stricter and more proper sense. And it is in this sense that it is almost always understood, especially if no further qualification is added. Now in this holy season of, of Advent, Holy Church calls to conversion the faithful in general, But does not the church know that many of the faithful are in no need of conversion from mortal sin to the life of sanctifying grace? The church, of course, knows that, but she also knows well that they are nonetheless in much need of a further conversion. That is why, through the sacred liturgy, she speaks often of the need we have of it, even if we are living a Christian life in the fear of God. The spiritual masters, as a matter of fact, refer often to the need of a second conversion, necessary for the Christian who, though he has thought seriously of his salvation and made an effort to walk in the way of God, has nevertheless begun once more to follow the bent of his nature and to fall into a state of tepidity, <laughs> like an engrafted plant reverting to its wild state. This is a strange but very common mixture of sincere love of God with inordinate love of self. The soul loves God more than itself, otherwise it would not be in the state of grace, it would not possess charity, but it still loves itself with an inordinate love. It has not yet reached the stage of loving itself in God and for his sake. Such a state of soul is neither white nor black. It is a light gray in which there is more white than black. The soul is on the upward path, but it still has a tendency to slip downwards. <clears throat> Saint Catherine of Siena emphasizes especially the faults which make a second conversion necessary, in particular, self-love. In varying degrees, this egoism survives in all imperfect souls in spite of the state of grace, and it is the source of a multitude of venial sins, of habitual faults which become characteristic features of the soul, rendering necessary a second conversion. Hence, we should cultivate the life of prayer and, in particular, mental prayer in order to be converted 
not merely from evil to good, as is the case in the first conversion, but also to convert from good to better and from better to perfection, a goal to which we are obliged by the first and highest precept. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart. Notice that we are not commanded simply to love God, a thing that is verified in everyone who is in the state of grace, even if he is completely careless about venial sins. But we are commanded to love him with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Hence, by virtue of the highest precept of the Divine Master, the soul that has, by God's grace, undergone the first conversion from mortal sin, cannot remain satisfied at this, as if it had reached the goal. <clears throat> Quite to the contrary, if we desire, as we are obliged, to love God with all our heart and soul, we are certainly in need of a further and deeper conversion. <clears throat> Therefore, a progressive conversion or attending towards perfection should be the main aim of our spiritual endeavors, the object towards which our ascetical practices and devotions should tend. <clears throat> All our spiritual exercises, without exception, are directed to this end, since it is our obligation to seek to be ever more perfectly ordered towards God. <clears throat> now, even though all pious exercises are calculated to foster this, meditation or mental prayer by its very nature and its diverse acts is preeminently the source of this necessary conversion. Those who are as yet only at the beginning of the spiritual life should propose to themselves as the goal of their mental prayer the extirpation of some sin or some defect, above all of their predominant vice, the victory over some temptation, the correction of some bad inclination, the governing of such and such a passion. When one evil is corrected, they should turn their prayer against another, for as long as it may be necessary in order to triumph over it. And in this way, mental prayer, well practiced, will gradually purify their souls. <laughs> Those who are making sp spiritual progress should, without abandoning this struggle against evil, employ their prayer mainly in cultivating the virtues, especially the fundamental ones and any virtue of which they have most need. Above all, they should use meditation to increase the spirit of faith, humility, self-renunciation, obedience, recollection, and the life of prayer. And here we must remember that the principal object of prayer is not to instruct us in the spiritual life, since spiritual reading would suffice for that. It is rather to inflame our will that it may discharge better its duty towards God, and especially to conform itself to the will of God, so that prayer may detach us from everything else, attach us to Him alone, and so transform, transform our habits and our life to the end that they may conform better to Christ and to His teaching. As Alfonso Rodriguez says, when we have recourse to meditation, it is to find out a remedy 
for our spiritual infirmities and to gain the victory over ourselves, over our passions and bad habits. And meditation is a means whereby we help ourselves for the amendment and reformation of our lives. The Church, by the inspired words of St. Paul, calls us today to conversion. Knowing the season that it is now the hour for us to rise from sleep. We must wake up from the state of sin or tepidity and renounce sin, and in particular, that sin which holds us from moving forward as we are obliged in our spiritual life. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And since it is above all in the practice of mental prayer that we obtain the strength to overcome sin and tepidity, let us resolve today to practice meditation daily and let us ask God for the grace to persevere in it. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.